David Bizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. In this episode 64, we are going to look at the modifications to a set of 289 heads. Now, essentially, although you can copy them for street work, these are a pair of my vintage category race heads. They work very well if you follow what's on there. On a two-plane manifold with about a 12 to 1 compression on pump gas, that's 91 octane, and uh, stock rockers, flat topic cam, quite a, a few other things, we managed to make 503 horsepower at about 7,700 and put the gear shift point at probably about eight. Now, that did have some good parts in it, the test engine. Now, are those horsepower numbers um, a little uh, generous? Well, th there's an old saying, the BS stops when the flag drops. We had this engine in a car for a short time before it broke the block. One of those things with using 60 year old blocks, but uh, anyway, during qualifying, nothing could stay with him on the track. People were suggesting that he had a nitrous kit on there, but nope. The only other car that could stay close to him was a car, another Mustang, with a pair of the same heads on, done by me. So, let's start on this. Now, a couple of points I want to raise here. I did this video a short time after my brain surgery. And I can't reshoot it because my cohort uh, that helped me do it is no longer on the scene. He's uh, become a family man and he's very busy building his own business. Now, when I first did this vis video, there was a lot of background noise as I did the introduction. So we tried to drown out, I say we, I tried to drown, drown out the background noise by putting some theme music in. Guys, I think I overdid it. Anyway, not to panic over it. I know that the theme music is a bit too loud, but I'm sure you'll find the video is worth it if you stick with it to the end. Anyway, here we go. And by the way, please don't forget to subscribe, like, hit the notify button, etc. Right? I am relying on your cooperation here to keep this channel going. Please back me up on this. Thank you. Here we go. What am I doing at the moment? I'm just checking the port wall thickness to the pushrod hole using this Helgeson ENI bar. Right? This is a easy thing to make in your own shop or at home. Um, it allows you to get the push rod uh, wall thickness to the port very close so you don't break into it. So that avoids having to fill out with uh, epoxy or getting it welded again. But anyway, we'll see this tool in action here, but we're doing something a little different for this video. Mostly with Paratech 10, I'm showing what I'm doing. In this video, I'm going to show you how a 289 small block Ford head is modified by one of my students. So, he's not an experienced head porter. This is his first real experience of porting a cylinder head. So you're gonna see how he gets on as he goes through the school tuition. And also you'll get to see how to modify a small block forward head to make a really big power difference. With all the intro set, let me introduce you to Phil Stillwell. He is going to use the knowledge that he's gained in the first part of my porting seminar to demonstrate how to do a small block Ford head that really will make some big power increases and it's not that difficult, just follow along. 
Hi, I'm Philip Stilwell, known around here as Iron Icon. Why? We'll get to that a bit later. What we have here today is a 289 casting off of a 66 Mustang. The reason we're going with this particular casting is because I want original iron in the Mustang I'm restoring. The head we have here was actually in very bad shape when we found it, uh, covered in rust and uh, just needed to be cleaned really well. What we ended up doing was acid dipping the head and uh, that's the reason we have this black finish here. doing right here is cleaning off the deck surface of the head after we acid dipped it so we can scribe for the chambers. What we're doing right here is uh, putting some dicom on so we can scribe our lines with the head gasket bore later. Quick tip, it's best to use red dicom. Your lines will show up a bit better for it. What we're about to do now is scribe the lines with the head gasket on to get our bore gasket. So, one important thing to remember is put in head to block dial so you can get a very accurate scribe line. Just like so. A little bit of advice for you real quick. If your dowels are sinking into your head, a little trick is to put in the head gasket. It tends to be just a little bit tighter and it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Now, be sure to keep your scribe nice and vertical while you're doing this and make about a half a dozen passes or so to make sure you get a good clear line. This is going to be your reference point and will affect the quality of your work later. Now, what we have here is what we call a seat protector valve. We've ground the margin off, if you can see, so it will slide right into the seat and sit flush with the chamber so we can get all our porting done. Now, if you look, with the margin ground completely out, we have complete access to the chamber floor to do anything we need to to the chamber. Here, you can see where I've begun to grind on the chamber to help relieve the intake valve shrouding. Remember, part of this is preserving the original seats. For this, we're going to need an intake protector valve. This is so when we're grinding, we don't risk hitting this area whatsoever. As you can see, with the valve in place, we now have no chance of hitting the seat. This is the technique I now use to help deshroud the valves the proper amount. All you need to know is the proper settings for your caliper for the intake and exhaust. Pay attention to your gasket line. You don't want to go over it or you will be compromising the integrity of the head gasket. The mod you see here is a mod that I've learned at DV's Pouring School. If you copy this cut into the chamber as you see here, it's worth a solid 10 horsepower, even on your basic small block board. There is one area that you should not grind on right here. It will kill airflow and not be helpful to you whatsoever. For this next step, you're gonna to need to take a trip down to your local Harbor Freight and get you a right angle air grinder. You're also going to need to get these sanding discs. They're two inch in diameter, also at Harbor Freight. But they're great and a versatile thing to use to get inside these little areas of the chamber that you can't get with a sanding roll very easily. Just for reference, you're going to need two of these sanding discs for each chamber, and it's good to go with an 80 grit. Forgot to mention, these air grinders are only $30. And if you keep them oiled, they'll last forever. The one I'm using right here is DV's and he's had it for over 10 years. What we have here is a half inch diameter 80 grit sand roll. We use this to finish up the chamber and you can see that I took out the seat protector valves. If you have a steady hand, you can do it without. So that's what we did today. Why would I take my valves out? Well, it's because I can put the vacuum cleaner in the port and it will collect all the grit that I make. Points to note. Be sure to radius around the spark plug hole 
And be sure to make sure this surface right here around the intake valve is either concave or flat. Note the valve seats and that they're shiny. DV used one of his techniques to just finish up the valve seat profiles because they were close and we didn't want to use a grinder. We'll show you how to do that later. Now for the hard part. To get the port right, you're going to need very good hand-eye coordination. First, we're going to start to show you how to do the bowl work. We're going to start off with doing the intake and the exhaust bit later and it's very similar. Here, we have a schematic for the intake port bowl. This schematic is not to scale. We have exaggerated the proportions to show more detail. The dotted lines being stock and the solid line being after porting. First, we're going to take a ball wheel and radius the port to the seat on both sides. This is the dodgy bit. Next, we're going to hip the ports across here to make them wider. Now, if you're wondering where the expression hip the ports came from, that came from Sean, one of DV's porting buddies. You're probably asking, why does this mod work? It's because we've opened up this area to give more room for air to get by the valve guide and the valve guide boss. So why have we cut it away more here on the cylinder wall side? It's because there's a tendency for more air to want to flow on this side of the port. When we get to the exhaust, we apply the same principles as we have to the intake bowl. But you have to be careful not to go as far with it. The exhaust bowl and port is very sensitive to bias, and we can't go that far with the castings we're working with unless we'd like a brand new expensive sprinkler. That was the dodgy bit. In case it wasn't clear how to use the ball wheel tool, we're going to show you one more time. Be sure to make contact with the port in this area of the tool. Too high and you're going to slip out of the port and damage your seat. Too low, you're going to probably make a vertical wall which will defeat the purpose of this modification. Try and follow what we've outlined here to make a nice radius up to the seat. Be sure to leave the seat about 60 to 70 thousandths thick now this is a rough cut port. To get this result, we used the stone cutter wheel as well as our 5 16 carbide burr. The same technique was used on the exhaust port. Be sure to get a nice smooth transition with the short turn radius. Just so you know, the flow through the exhaust port doesn't go straight in and out. It actually goes toward this side and out. So remember to bias your port toward the cylinder wall. It's time for some flow bench testing. Now what we're testing is just the bowl work that we've done so far. We haven't touched the port and there's still some work to be done, but what we want to do is have a nice benchmark. Now to get that benchmark, we're going to be using David's induction optimization program. This program is great for telling us if we're moving forward and progressing with the port or for backtracking and hurting it. Now, this program is free to any attendee to David's seminar, as well as other programs. But if you can't make it to the seminar, you can buy this program as well as others off David's website. That's really all it is, the flow testing. You just have to be accurate. Well, we have our curves, our baseline versus after we've done our bowl work. And you see our intake fared very well, especially up at the mid to top. Now our exhaust didn't fare as well, and our belief is it's due to the fact that we don't have a good radius on our exhaust valve that we're reusing. So we're gonna have to tackle that as well as the bump still being in the exhaust port. So now we're going to go and take out the exhaust bump. Well, that's as far as we're going in this episode of the uh, Ford uh, cylinder head deal. What I need you to do now is to look out for part two, where we will actually deal with the flow figures obtained and the, with the finished heads and the dyno results. And I can tell you now, they were way bigger than any of you are going to guess. 
So look out for that. Last point. If you've got the patience, you could do these at home. I would have done when I was 20. I would have done them at home. Mind you, at 20, I've got five years of porting experience, but hey, that was me. Anyway, I will see you in the next episode, which shouldn't be too far down the road, maybe a couple of weeks. And till then, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, notify, even super thanks if that's the way you want to go. Right? Don't forget, we are totally self-funded by this. There's no big corporation doing this. This is me and Andy and a couple of helpers. So go for it. Thank you for watching.